The choice of constrained loops isn't unique. As long as my constrained loops account for all the currents in the current sources, they have no other restrictions. So I'm going to redo this example with a different set of constrained loops. I'm going to pick the same mesh loops that I did before. So this is going to be I1 and this will be I2. But I'm going to pick different constrained loops. For my first one, I still need to go through this 18 amp source. But beyond that, it doesn't matter where it goes. I think I'll loop through there. So this is 18 amps. It accounts for this current. It matches its magnitude and direction. For the 6 amp source, I think I'll start here, go up here, come around, come down through here, and then back here. Make that 6 amps. Kind of a weird and awkward choice, but it does match the magnitude and direction of that 6 amp source. Nothing else matters. Now I'm going to write KVL around my two mesh loops. So KVL on loop 1. I'm going to start here. I'm going to set my polarities for the 6 ohm resistor according to the direction of I1 and I'm going to do the same thing with the 12 ohm resistor. So I have 6 ohms times I1 is entering the positive terminal. This 6 amp constrained loop is entering the negative terminal so that becomes I1 minus 6 amps. Then I see my 9 volt source. For the 12 ohm resistor I have 12 ohms times the sum of its currents. I1 is entering the positive terminal and I2 enters the negative terminal, so that's going to be I1 minus I2. I also have this 18 amp constrained loop going through that resistor. Now it enters the negative terminal, so that becomes a minus 18 amps. That brings me back to my starting point, so those all add up to zero. Now, for loop two, I'll start down here. I have a 4 ohm resistor. I2 is going through that. As usual, I'm going to set up my sign convention so that the mesh current that I'm following enters the positive terminal. Then I also have a 6 amp constrained loop coming down this direction through that resistor. So that becomes a minus 6 amps because that one's entering the negative voltage terminal. My next resistance is 12 ohms. I2 is entering the positive terminal because I'm switching my polarity to that. I1 enters the negative terminal and I have an 18 amp constrained loop that is also entering the positive terminal. So that becomes a plus 18 amps. Finally, this other 4 ohm resistor, its voltage is 4 ohms times I2. And I have an 18 amp constrained current that is also entering the positive terminal. That sums to zero. There are my two equations in my two unknowns, I1 and I2. Now to find capital I1, I1 is just the sum of the currents through that 12 ohm resistor. Its direction is given to be this. So I2 goes through that resistor. It's in the same direction as capital I1, so that's a positive contribution. I1 is in the opposite direction. And then the 18 amp constrained loop is in the same direction as I1. There are my three equations and three unknowns that I can solve for I1.